The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Herod the Tetrarch heard of the reputation of Jesus, and he said to his servants, This man is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers are at work in him. Now Herod had arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. Although he wanted to kill him, he feared the people, for they regarded him as a prophet. But at a birthday celebration for Herod, the daughter of Herodias performed a dance before the guests and delighted Herod so much that he swore to give her whatever she might ask for. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was distressed. But because of his oaths and the guests who were present, he ordered that it be given, and he had John beheaded in the prison. The head was brought in on a platter and given to the girl, who took it to her mother. The disciples came and took away the corpse and buried him, and they went and told Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Can't resist whenever we have this Gospel to comment that they sure knew how to throw a party in those days. Uh, John the Baptist lost his head over a dancing girl. So that having been said, uh, our saint today, uh, Peter Chrysolidus, uh, lived just after the time of the great martyrs and the great witnesses, those who were being put to death for the faith. He lived around the beginning of the 400s. That was still a time of great controversy. In fact, it was still a time when people were losing their lives because of what they believed or because they were uh, in certain positions in the church or among God's people that were unpopular with others. So it was still a time of great turmoil. And he was the bishop of Ravenna in Italy. Now, Ravenna today is a relatively small town. It's actually a nice city. It's one of my very favorite cities in in Italy simply because it's not totally overrun with tourists and yet has some very significant um, churches and um, remnants from our own past history, which I won't really go into too much here, except they do play a part in uh, understanding St. Peter Chrysologus. Now, Chrysologus is not his last name like Welber's is mine, or Smith, or Jones, or whatever, Chrysologus was a nickname that was given to him by the empress, Galla, or Gallia Placidia, who heard him preach, and the word Chrysologus means golden words. One of the reasons why I think the empress nicknamed him golden words is that unlike a lot of preachers, he did not preach so long that he put everybody to sleep. In fact, his uh, homilies, as we have some of them recorded, were rather brief and very, very much to the point. He lived in a time when there were great tensions among a complex variety of groups of people. 
not unlike our times today. It wasn't just simple good against evil, it was whole bunches of different sorts of people um, claiming their own spiritual or physical territory and having a great deal of controversy and even fighting. Peter navigated his way through this. What was happening at that time was great differences beginning between East and West, between the Eastern Empire centered at Constantinople and the Western Empire centered at Rome, but Rome was becoming a very difficult to manage backwater city, so the emperor moved to Ravenna. And for a time, the seat of the western side of the Roman Empire was in Ravenna. That was significant because the Visigoths from the north, barbarians, began to take over there in Italy, and eventually the king in Ravenna was a Visigoth who was also an Arian. Now, that means he was a follower of Arius with the heresy that uh, Jesus was not truly God, but he was a very, very specially created a man, human being, but uh, given a share in divinity, but not one with God. And Ravenna was a point of real struggle between those two ways of looking at Jesus. And there were some martyrs in those days to one side or the other, actually. But Peter managed to navigate his way through all of those controversies simply by focusing on one thing. And that one thing was the love of God manifested in the great mercy and compassion that God has for us, such a great mercy and compassion that he sent his son. He didn't just send a uh, delegate, but rather he himself, God himself, in the person of Jesus Christ, became one of us. And that shows how much, how much God loves us. So his basic message was, you know, the incarnation, Jesus being both God and human, totally, isn't just an abstract doctrine. It's not out there somewhere, something that we're supposed to believe. But rather, it is at the very heart of how God makes himself present to us as becoming one who is equal to us so that in his mercy he may lead us to become one with him. So he was constantly preaching, pay attention to your dignity. Pay attention to your own self-worth not something you can claim by yourself, but it is something that God values so much. And so recognizing how much God values and loves us, let us present ourselves before him in 